So that's actually a great segue to the next question. Um, you had mentioned that having an ego as an entrepreneur or yeah. CEO can be really detrimental to your business. You have to be willing to say, you know what, we had a hypothesis, yeah. the hypothesis was not correct, we need to mm. shift. What are some other qualities that you think are, are really important um, mm. in a successful entrepreneur? Uh, that's such a great question. Because um, the e ego thing's a really double-edged sword, right? Um, and so there's a real kind of yin and yang to the founder, and I'm gonna speak more specifically about the hustler, non-technical founder, because that's, that's me. Um, and so on one level, you have to be devoid of ego to the point where you continually surround yourself with better and better people, people who can, um, people have, who have more talent than yourself, be able to, be able to change direction, be, uh, be able to be a true servant leader, um, and uh, you know, not, not be a dictator. Right, uh, and, and not all founders are able to do that. A lot of founders do that because they want to be in control. Um, and I do have some of, I do have a high D and high dominance in my personality. But, uh, but, I, but I think it's, it is important to subordinate yourself to the greater good of the company. Um, and not everyone makes that shift. On the other hand, you have to have the confidence in yourself to power through the, all the challenges that happen. If you think about it, right, it's, it's a remarkable thing to be a technology entrepreneur, like a high growth technology entrepreneur. You basically have to discover something that nobody else has discovered. You have to be the ultimate contrarian, mm -hmm. right? So how do you go in one direction where everybody else in the entire world is going in the other direction? Like that's a really hard thing to do, yeah. right? And so you think, well, that, that's a high ego thing, right? And, and it, and it is. And so for me, I think what the bridge is between those two things is that um, one's really narrow focus about what you want to do so that you can learn at a very deep level how that market works. And that way, you can have the confidence as an entrepreneur to go your own way because you have the deep knowledge. You've done the work that no other entrepreneur has been willing to do. Um, and so I think, so the first thing I think is this duality of having very high confidence in oneself, but at the same time, not um, a damaging ego. The ability to subordinate your own needs to the needs of the company. So I think that's one. Um, the the uh, need to learn continually. I can't emphasize that enough, right? Um, curiosity about how the world really works. To be able to ask those five questions. Why, 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 right? And to keep going because you really want to discover the right answer. Um, and to always be learning and upgrading skills, right? Particularly on the, on the human side of things, right? So, um, you know, management and leadership skills, I mean, you guess you can read lots of books about it, um, but I don't think you could ever know enough about people and how to get the most out of people. Um, and so I think it's continually, uh, continual learning is, is critical. I spend a lot of time, whether it's, it's networking with people, reading books and blogs and whatever. At least 20% of my week is actually wow, spent 20%. learning um, and, and continuing to, to, you know, to evolve myself. Um, I, I would say that as a non-technical founder, it's important to be charming. Um, now what do I mean by that? So uh, not charming in like the George Clooney sense, um, <laughs> which is good because I, I don't have that particular quality. My wife reminds me sometimes. <laughs> uh, but um, you need to attract people. Right? And uh, people are attracted by um, honesty and transparency and a hard work ethic and authenticity. Um, a big part of the job of founder is to attract the best employees, um, even investors, right? Um, you know, investors like to talk all about metrics, particularly here we're at OpenView, they love to talk about metrics. But at the end of the day, people make decisions on people. And, and I think even if it's subconscious, they're like, am I attracted to this person or not? Is this someone I want to work with? Is this a person that I feel I can learn from, that I want to spend time with? Um, so I think, and those are skills that can be learned, right? Uh, those are skills that you can, you know, you can learn how to uh, speak, be uh, you know, speak better in public, um, how to network more effectively, right? Um, how to connect people, right? All those uh, attractive qualities, I think, are things that can be learned, so. But you have to have that curiosity to be able to even start learning and yeah. encourage yourself to get better in those areas. For sure, and curiosity is really attractive, yeah. right? Last, when's last, you know, last time you've gone to a cocktail party and you had heard somebody and they talk about themselves all the time, mm -hmm. 
probably not that interesting, yeah. right? But that person who's really curious, genuinely curious, genuinely cared about you, really wanted to understand more about your life, that was probably somebody you really enjoyed spending time with, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think that the you know, charm and curiosity and learning, they, they actually all go together yeah, as part of the you know, constellation of traits that uh, I think are important for, for, for founders.